Hey guys, what's up? Darcy here at Six Strings Nine Lives. Welcome to episode 23 of Six with Six Strings, a long overdue episode. But way back, I thought, you know, how am I going to sustain, you know, doing videos on a consistent basis without just showing new things? You know, you can't survive on updates alone. A, you'll go broke. B, you're going to end up with a bunch of shit that you've just bought to show people because you needed something to show. Um, I'm sure we're all guilty of that, uh, me included, but I thought I need some sort of, you know, kind of filler episode to talk about the music I love. So if you're newer to the channel since I've started this, you know, just me grabbing six random albums from my collection, talking a little bit about them, trying not to make the, these videos too lengthy, you know, the maybe 14 to 16 minute type of videos, but just talking about music that I already own, and love and sometimes with a bit of a theme so today i do have a bit of a theme all six of these bands are no longer um, active uh, whether it be key members that have passed away or they've retired um, i'd say this batch though a lot of key members have um, long not long passed away but have passed away and uh, no longer uh, active i mean they're probably still putting out some you know, a live album here and there or a reissue here and there, which you'll kind of pick up on as you go. But if you want to, you know, have a little bit of fun to let me know in the comments of bands that are, you know, inactive, that you still love and are still a big part of your listening experience. Do you listen to them more now the same? Do you listen to them less that they're not active? Just let me know in the comments. Always interesting to hear from you guys. And always appreciate it. So today, let's just uh, start off with uh, a guy that would have just celebrated his 80th birthday. And I don't know. I think there's no doubt in my mind if Ronnie James Dio was still alive, he would have been trying to perform in some aspect and, you know, uh, throwing those in the air. And uh, But anyways, here's an album. And I'll just kind of throw this out there that these aren't necessarily my favorites from these bands. But they are some of them, some of my let's say go tos. Okay, um, so here is Dio's fourth album, Dream Evil. Um, I have done a ranking on this um, on on Dio's discography, the Dio band discography. But this is definitely a um, one one of my personal favorites. You can check that out if you want. But uh, I often grab this album. This is their uh, first with Craig Goldie on guitar. I love the whole atmosphere of this album great songs great tracks like um the the title track is phenomenal dream evil uh, sunset superman all the fools sailed away one of my favorites uh, i could have been a dreamer uh, when a woman cries to me this is a really really solid solid album and a bit better than um sacred heart in my opinion but uh so there is dio's Dream Evil, fourth overall studio. So this is the one I do uh, go to quite often. I mean, Holy Diver and um, The Last in Line, they're, they're kind of just embedded in my large uh, pumpkin of a head. So I don't always grab those, so I'll go for that one. Next up, let's grab some... Um, so anyways, rest in peace, Ronnie James Dio. And uh, pretty much most of this, well, the original portion of this band there these guys are all gone um, you probably already know where i'm headed with this one but this is one of my go-to motorhead albums this is orgasm orgasmatron from 1986 so this is what their seventh studio album first is a four piece and i think that four piece lasted till about 1995 which they all said Wur wurzel on guitar but i actually i just love this album it uh, again, probably not my favorite Motorhead overall, but it's definitely in the top. I think I had it in the top five for sure. Better shot of the cover. This one has a real atmosphere to me too. It has a, uh, I don't know, it just has a really great sound. I love the title track, um, which is the last track on the album. Some other favorites. Starts off with a real crusher. Uh, Death Forever, uh, Claw, yeah, that's a good one too. 
But my favorite track on this album is called Built for Speed. It's just kind of just right where Motorhead was at that time. Um, just, yeah, awesome, awesome album. Let me know, are you a, are you a fan of Motorhead? Is this one of uh, your go-tos? So there is that one. Next up, uh, let's go with, you know what? A band that I, I can't lie to you, in the 90s, I was into this band. 1990, great album. 92, great album. 94, pretty good. And after that, they kind of lost me on their last two albums. And at the time, which I can keep you guessing here, you already know who I'm talking about, but here's a band that didn't even acknowledge their first four albums. And at the, you know, in the 90s, I mean, I probably didn't find out they even had uh, four earlier albums till, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago, to be honest with you. But this is one of my go-to Pantera albums. I am, like I said, I, I can't lie to you, I was a fan in the 90s, but I've, I've really gone away from them, to be honest. Uh, I don't hate them by any means. I acknowledge what they were they were uh, doing in the 90s and how important of a factor they were in the metal world but i've uh I, I just don't go to their that stuff anymore if i go to anything i will grab this album their fourth album called power metal from 1988 and uh, this is whether you this is a, a judas priest worship whatever the riffs on here are phenomenal um, at the time diamond daryl i don't think he had changed his uh, name to Dimebag yet, but this is just such a great album, and I wish it is a, you know, if those two brothers were still alive, I I would hope that, uh, you know, they would um, acknowledge those four albums and get a proper reissue out there. I know there's some bootlegs out there that are, you know, fairly good, and this is an unofficial release also. I do have all of the uh, first four Pantera albums on these unofficial CDs. And I really enjoy them, to be honest with you. This is Rock the World, the, the, the title track, Power Metal. Um, Proud to be Loud, you know, awesome. Death Trap, Hard Ride. Uh, yeah, if you have not uh, checked out uh, earlier Pantera, give it a try. I know there are fans that are love the early stuff, and then there's the fans that don't acknowledge the early stuff, but... Man, this is a really good album. Not the greatest album cover, but, excuse me, definitely worth checking out from Pantera. What else do we have here? All right, so, of course, Pantera, you've lost some key members there. Um, here's a band that actually retired and uh, so far has stayed retired. But here is one of my kind of go-to Slayer albums, and that is their debut from 1983 called Show No Mercy. Um, to me, this is before they really found that Slayer sound, which kind of, um, you know, got going um, more on their second album and, of course, on their third album and so on. But this one has a real new wave of British heavy metal feel. Um, tracks like Evil Has No Boundaries, The Antichrist, I mean, just top to bottom. I really enjoy this album, and it's, um, you know... I don't know, it's just refreshing to grab this once in a while and and uh, give it a spin. Because there's some later Slayer albums that, I'll, I'll be honest, I'll be, I'll be lucky if I, I pick them up once every three years just to give them a listen to. Or, um, or if I've done a ranking video, I'll kind of listen to everything. And But yeah, one of my go-to Slayer albums. Uh, if this is your favorite band, do you um, often go for this one? Or what are your go-tos? What do we got? Two more left. So we're just ripping through this. So yeah. And like I said, join in. Let me know some of these bands that are, um, you know, I look at my collection. There's probably a few more that aren't active anymore, but um, some of these older bands that I've been listening to, you know, since, you know, mid, you know, early to mid eighties are, they're still active actually. So, so uh, let's show this one next. So we lost a uh, just a legend a few years back in uh, Neil Peart from Rush, and um, I'm I'm a huge fan of the band. I don't uh, actually I don't I don't show enough Rush 
on my channel. I need to, but here's a chance for me to show this one. This is one of my go-to albums. This is their uh, 10th studio album from 1984. Um, they took, uh, they, they had worked with Terry Brown for years and years. So this is their first album without Terry uh, on production. They went with uh, Peter Henderson on this one. This is right smack dab in, you know, the 80s. They had, what, about five albums in the 80s, a lot of keyboard orientated stuff, but this is a real sleeper in the Rush um, discography. I just, you know what, if I just want to kick back and relax and, you know, whatever, turn the lights off, have a drink and put this on, it just takes me away. It honestly does. Um, great tracks, Distant Early Warning, uh, that was the um, first uh, single video back in here in Canada, Much Music. Um, After Image, Red Sector A, another great song. The Enemy Within, Kid Gloves, always love that one, Between the Wheels. Just not a weak, not a weak track on here, not a super, uh, you know, like I said, not, not super heavy by any means, a very uh, keyboard orientated, you know, synths. Uh, you can tell by the way these guys have got their hair all cut and stuff, but I just love this album and uh, definitely love some Rush. And uh, yeah, and I think this one might be the only one with Peter Henderson um, on the production. They went with uh, actually another Peter after that. Peter Collins produced in, uh, probably the next six Rush albums, but uh, yeah. If you're a Rush fan, where does that one stand? Let me know. And finally, we will wrap this episode up with uh, a band that I absolutely love their debut album. Their second album is great. Their third, Heartbreak Station, not one of my favorites, but, and then a few years had passed and then this one I never really owned. I actually, I never owned it um, until a few years ago. I finally picked this up. It's not easy to get. But this is Cinderella's fourth album called Still Climbing. Not easy to get, and I don't even think there is a vinyl. There might be one of those um, unofficial vinyl releases for this. You know, correct me if I'm wrong, maybe there is a reissue, but this one has some great tracks on it. I would uh, encourage you if you gave up after Heartbreak Station to, if you do see this one, pick it up. Uh, first of all, it's it's pretty valuable. You know, it's it's worth a, a few bucks. You know, nothing major, but uh, yeah, tracks like, uh, and this one does remind me more of, um, you know, Long Cold Winter. Great tracks like Bad Attitude Shuffle. Love that tr uh, track. But a few of my real favorites on here are the title track, uh, Still Still Climbing. It's a slow building plotting song with uh, I don't know just. To um, Tom just sounds awesome. And yes, I know um, Tom is still active, but uh, as Cinderella, I, I don't think they're active at all or touring as Cinderella. You know, uh, rest in peace, Jeff Labar. And as far as original members, I think Fred only appears on one song. I think most of the drums on here are done by Kenny Aronoff, um, if you're familiar with that name. But anyways, other tracks, Blood From A Stone, love that one. Through the Rain, Freewheeling. Yeah, if you haven't checked out uh, Cinderella's fourth and final album, I, I'm sure they have some live stuff out there too that I don't own. But as far as studio albums go, that is uh, kind of where it ends. So yeah, I thought you might enjoy an episode of that. Jump in on the comments. Let me know some of the bands that are, um, that are your favorites that aren't active anymore. That would be cool to hear as always. Hope you enjoyed that one. And until next time, stay heavy.